The video is intended for education and training of eye surgeons. Viewer discretion is advised, not recommended for children. Hello, I am Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan from Nandadi Pai Hospital, Sangli, India, FECO Training Center. In this video, I will be speaking about a case where the incision wouldn't close with hydration. So let's have a look why it was happening. So this is a white mature cataract. I am going to do FECO emulsification in this surgery. And uh, I've done a side port incision and this is the main 2.8 millimeter incision. I want to show it again because it's very relevant with the case. You can see the incision is perfect, perfectly rectangular, no ragged edges, no short incision. It's uh, around 1.5 millimeter or more long and full pass of the keratome indicating full 2.8 millimeter wide incision. I am going to use heavy dispersive OVD, in this case Hylucote which is combination of 3% hyaluronate and 4% chondroitin sulphate. I made a CCC with cystitome, all going well and I am going to start FECO emulsification and my focus here is on dividing the nucleus into pieces and that's what I was seeing but I want you to see what is happening at the incision. You can see the FECO needle inside the sleeve is getting pushed against the incision and at this point it is very tightly I would say connected with the one part of the incision and as I am focusing on nucleus division which is happening nicely and I am going to do the quadrant removal for quadrant removal, I am using combination of torsional with longitudinal FECO and I use the same setting for all hard grade cataracts. I never have any issues with these settings. And as the FECO is being delivered, now you can notice little bit of whitening occurring where the FECO needle is very closely associated with corneal incision. Very subtle, I never noticed it during the surgery. And that's the end of the FECO, very quick surgery. And you can see this. Just inside the edge of the incision, you can see a whitish area. That is the area of corneal burn. And I didn't notice this while I was doing the surgery, but now when I reviewed the video, I could now notice it. Though it looks very subtle, and uh, during the surgery, because I never thought there was any issue, I continued with removal of the cortex, IOL insertion, removal of the viscoelastic, and then I will try to close the incision as usual by hydration of the incision sides like this. And uh, I have shown this in my incision closure tricks. So same thing I am doing and with this much of hydration and with well constructed incision usually it seals off very quickly. But now you can see I, am, I have to push more fluid here because you can see the AC is shallowing despite I am hydrating the incision. IL is coming anteriorly indicating that there is a wound leak and now I am hydrating more and more. Now I know that this is not generally required for a good incision which I had made at the start. But then I thought that I might have made a shorter incision. So let me try Wong's pocket. So this is the Wong's pocket, which is superficial to the initial incision. And I'm going to hydrate that pocket. And in most of the cases, if the incision is short, it just seals it. Still, it is leaking. You can see the AC is not forming well. There is a leak from the main incision. So something is you know, different. So this is the time when I realized that there is a profuse wound leak and the reason could be the wound burn and as I injected air in the anterior chamber I can see the air bubble there going into that small channel which was indicating the tissue loss or I would say tissue shrinkage which had happened in the area of corneal wound burn. So now I realize that I am dealing with wound burn which is shrinkage of the collagen because of the heat dissipated from the FECO needle. So the way to deal with it is to suture. So I made first suture. Still it was leaking. 
So in these cases, you have to take multiple sutures because we want the incision to be watertight and not just airtight. If you put air in the anterior chamber, the leak will stop. But as the air gets absorbed, it will leak again. I don't want that. So I'm going to put more in sutures here. And that's what is needed in case of wound burn. Even after two suture, sutures, you can see there is still leakage. And I have to go for a third suture. Sometimes you may have to go for more sutures. So the, this is the third suture in the area of wound burn. And after the third suture was put, I could form the anterior chamber. It was not leaking. I left little bit of air bubble and I am going to ask the patient to lie on one side so that it will just abut that area. And then I am going to pad or patch the patient for a couple of hours and I am going to re-examine the patient again. This patient did very well after the suturing and there was a routine course. So what was the cause here? Continuous phaco energy delivery, more common with longitudinal phaco. Heavy dispersive OVD is thermogenic. It will not allow the heat to dissipate. Too tight sleeve or tight incision reduces the irrigation around the phaco tip. Clock phaco tip again, it will stop the in irrigation around the phaco tip and cause dissipation of energy to the corneal tissue. And phaco ne needle pressed against one side, as you saw in this particular case. So, these are the causes. Now, how to prevent it? Always use power modulations, particularly if you are using longitudinal phaco. Torsional is always preferable. Use appropriate size keratome for the incision so you don't have very tight incision use the appropriate sleeve recognize the blocked phaco tip immediately if there is any occlusion of the tip change it flush it wash little bit of heavy dispersive ovd before you start phaco to avoid tip block because of the ovd observe incision closely while you are doing harder cataracts you can ask assistant to keep flushing the incision with cool bss Wound burn is rare with torsional phaco and also with power modulations but it's always better to keep watch on it because prevention is better than treating a advanced corneal wound burn. Now suturing is the easiest way to deal with it but if it is too severe one may need cyanoacrylate glue or conjunctal hooding or sometimes patch graft to take care of the wound burn. Generally there is associated astigmatism because of the tissue shrinkage but over a period of time as the wound heals generally the cornea may get its original shape back do not neglect it because it may cause persistent hypotony leakage and uh, increase risk of endophthalmitis so i think this case showed us what the corneal wound burn is even for subtle corneal wound burn as you can see here i needed to suture the incision and even with torsional phaco, it happened because the needle was pressing against the corneal incision. This is one complication you should always watch out for. For more such videos, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can visit our website phacotraining.org.in. Thank you so much.